And there are some hardliners in this government that are sponsoring this kind of narratives. They just want to show that they can Islamize this country. They, they think about Taliban, they think about the Mujahideens, and they want to replicate it in this country. And they don't care what happened. They simply don't care. As long as at the end of the day, there's Sharia, and there is uh, whatever thing they have in their head, and they want to achieve. Good morning, Mazi Okokondem. It's a great pleasure welcoming you here this morning. Of course, good morning to SM fans, wherever you might be watching now, depending on your terms of good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Yes, uh, the latest happenings in the Nigerian House of Representatives, where the argument for the Islamization of the Nigerian state uh, through the adoption of the Sharia law as a national law that could be enforced uh, on all Nigerians was debated uh, the bill was sponsored, of course, by a Nathana, supported by all House of Representatives from the North, which ev eventually was uh, countered by the Southern Re House of Representatives members. But then it was stepped down uh, for further uh, discussion in the next sitting. This is now happening before us. The Islamization agenda is no longer hidden. And uh, this is what someone... But Amazim Nandekano has been speaking against uh, sensitizing the masses, but it appears uh, the, the, the masses do not understand that now it is no longer, of course, a projection, but a reality, starting at Nigerians today, that the supposed secular state called Nigeria is just a mere a secular state in paper, but an Islamic state, of course, in action. And implementation today. Your take on this development, the history of the movement for the Islamization of Nigeria. Your take on this. I am Mr. Paradeni Okokonde. Islamization of Nigeria is not a new agenda or new ways in Nigeria. Uh, Nigeria to be a secular state or a secular nation that everybody has a choice to worship whatever they want to worship. It's ordinary um, story. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a moonlight story. It's just like saying that we are one Nigeria. It's, it's a, a moonlight story. And if you watch, Islamization of Nigeria did not start today. It starts from the day of Usman Dafodio. If you, if you go down memory lane or history, you will know that Usman Dafodio was not only fighting to make Nigeria a state of planning state, but he was also fighting to Islamize because Usman Dafodio comes from the agenda of Islam. This agenda of Islam, this Islamization agenda is what he he put in front to convince the houses their first conquest. Now, before Fulani um, Islam came to Nigeria, every indigenous Nigerian are idol worshippers, that's their own traditional religion. Now, when, when Usman Dafodio came in, he started telling them about their own gods, that it's not the real God to serve. He by the heart of the youth. Hausa youths, when he discovered that he have half a much number, he used them against their leaders that were worshipping traditional religion. Go against them and conquer them and turn all of them into Islam and turn all of them into slaves. They thought that they are free. Now, he tried to conquer, little by little, all ethnic nationalists in the north that are different, different tribes conquering them. We conquer the main core north and establish emirate over there. Coming down to meet the bed, he found it difficult. He found it very difficult. That middle bed issue lingered until the coming of white men. Who's wonderful have come and settled the north before the coming of white men. 
because he came in 18, he started the war in 18, uh, uh, 1800, and ended up 1804. He have already conquered the houses. Now, if you watch, he cannot start that war 1800. He cannot enter 1800 and start that war in 1800. He might have entered maybe in 17 something. At least have spent 10 to 20 years or more than that, which made him to able to gather the indigenous people of Hausas against Hausas. Now, from that period, to the coming of white men, he tried to expand, to expand. But at that time, Quara and Co haven't been under him. Until Afonja went and invited them against the Yoruba authority, against the Obas authority, because Afonja was taken for a general, manding that territory, because all the whole Yoruba general were in boundary land protecting or your empire or so before Afonja went and bring them in and was able to help, they help him he, come, he, he capture only Quara and become over of Quara later they overthrow him and kill him and take over and the Islam take over that's how not Quara became northern part of north before it wasn't north and they established their Islam there established Emirate there. But coming to down to middle bed, TV and others, Lantan and others resist them. They fought to fought to fought until white men came in. They fought to fought to fought to fought, fought until independence. When Joseph Teka said no, when they want to call them to not, when they want to call Benue, this present Benue to not, or TV is to not. Joseph Teka said, no, we are not houses, we are not Muslims, we are not Flanese. We are TVs, we are middle beds. When, when, um, after the independence, when um, Ahmad Dubelu want to force Sharia, this Sharia on them, they say no. They say, if not so, if you are doing so, we will pull out from north, we are not north. Let us go back to our brother, the Sultanas. Let us go back to our brother, the Sultanas. The British asked Ahmad Bulu to mellow down, allow them to practice their religion and their culture and the secular law. As time goes on, you know how we do it. And it was this Islamization that led to 15 January Revolution, which people don't know. Because some other folks have, I mean, Ahmad Bulu have swear that he, would dip, he put his, his leg on desert and dip another leg on Atlantic Ocean and be reading Quran, which means he captured Nigeria under Islam. And uh, in the uh, 12th of, of October, we get Nigeria get independent, 1st of October. On 12th of October, 11 days interval or 10 days interval, Ahmad Dubello came to a newspaper, pilot newspaper owned by Zik, and said, this, inter this, is, this enterprise called Nigeria, supposed to be his grandfather housing estate you know what it means supposed to be his grandfather housing estate this enterprise called nigeria supposed to be his grandfather housing estate you know what it means now if you go ahead when he want to carry out jihad, jihad war on on the 17th of january 1966 the 15 boys of January 15, they had of it in time. And they didn't have of it in time, but they had of it almost to the period that made them to go on on that emergency revolution and carry it out on the 15 before 17, two days earlier, before Ahmad Bello old. And before then, uh, Jihadist warriors from Iran have rounded the eastern part of Nigeria from Chad down to Atlantic Ocean along Nigerian Chad Cameroon border. 
then onto Atlantic Ocean. Because the early people, the early Igbos or Easterners that went or not, they have lobbied them. They have lobbied them with the gift to bring Islam in, Niger in, in the Eastern part. They say no, they refuse. Because before then, Christianity have hold the upper hand in East. Apart from Christianity, the next religion the Easterners have in Nigeria is their traditional religion. Obenala. Obenala. And if you watch this traditional religion, uh, it was adopted from Judaism. Because every way of Judaism is what they are practicing. But now, in a adulterous way, which made it to be a traditional religion, but all the whole law they are made, uh, they are doing, they drive it from Jewish law, according to the scripture, Torah, of Jewish Torah. That's why they drive it. And uh, before Christianity, before Christianity came in, and most of them, at least forty percent of them, that time, adopt Christianity. But now it's more than 80% Christianity. So when they discover they cannot lobby these people with their gifts to willingly accept Islam. And the middle bet have been a barrier between them and the Easterners. They mellow down and want to carry forth revolution on January 17 before the five majors are bought it. it it doesn't work then they use the one to carry out the law to conquer because they have discovered that the west the robbers are more flexible in religion than the easterners after the conquer of quara states current quara state now the yorubas other yorubas willingly enter islam nobody again force them to be entering islam this is why if you go to Oshun, you have much muslims there they willingly entering islam not anybody not force them again but in the eastern part of it at the middle bed it wasn't so you understand now their target is if we can conquer the easterners the middle bed is nothing for us we can be able to conquer them. So all the target was to conquer Easterners. Conquer Easterners. And the, when the five majors abort it, because that the revolution was to use Akintola and Brigadier Guntupe to finish up the West, then face is direct. And they almost succeeded in the West. And Ogutupe was promised to be the chief of army staff. They would dispose the Rosi because plan had been on the ground. Neither to kill Hiroshi in that, revol in that their revolution or to send Hiroshi compulsory six months leave. Compulsory six months leave. Because that time it was NPC, not People Congress, that hold the power, central power. Before the five majors, I mean, the 15th, January 15 boys came to be. And Hiroshi was among them to kill under that revolution. The terrorists escaped and abort the revolution and destroyed the revolution totally. This is why it looks like the Eastern people have not fought. But the terrorists destroyed everything because it was a part of them to kill before not carry their own counter coup. Their, their, their own coup, not counter coup, because the first one wasn't coup, it was a revolution. Even the one himself confirmed me that it was a revolution. When when the, when when uh, 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 Major Zogu died in, in 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 battlefield, they were they they if that on the side of Nigeria, not that as a Nigerian man, but Nigeria was able to get his dead body. When when they were giving him burial in the in Kaduna, the one confirmed that Zogu did not carry out coup. What he carried out is revolution. So go and confirm it. This go one now run away. That put Nigeria into a problem and run away. You understand? Now, um, when they not carry their own coup, Liba Moritala 
hijacked by Gowan. Um, the war started. This is why Danjuma said, not an agenda. Not an agenda that was the one to be there. Not that they like the one. But when they wanted to be pure, how some not? They will lead the government after, after uh, uh, Irosi. The one wanted to, to seize the power as second in command of Irosi. When not want to do, you force the one out. Britain call them that don't force go one out. If you force go one out, the one people which is middle bed will not join hand with you and fight the war against these people. Because British target is to punish Igbo, to eliminate, wipe Igbo's off, wipe Eastern Nigeria off. That was the target of British up to today. Allow the one to be there. Use them to fight the war, finish. After using the, the fight, to fight the war fish, you can come up and do whatever I want to do. They advise the call not. Hausan, Fulani, they agree. This is why it looks like uh, T.Y. Danjuma, not an agenda, stand. They say, if you are fighting these people again, they will not join your hand. And that no, 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 uh, you cannot be able to win the war. Then in 1968, 1968, when they discovered that Nigeria had have some family holding upper hand against Biafra, that there's no way that Biafra can defeat Nigeria. Because their own fear at the initial stage was the Igbos are very brilliant, Igbos are very clever, that they will not fight. But British advised them, we will support you, we we'll give you the weapon, we we'll give you the uh, 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 machineries, we we'll give you whatever you want. Fight them, they cannot do anything. And their plan was that time, if the Igbos, as they put it, that time, Biafra haven't declared. If the Igbos are too strong for them, instead of the Igbos to capture them, they will blow Marco the bridge off. Let the, the Satan Benue go back. Where yeah, they come from, because all of them are Igbos. You know them, all of them are Igbos. We blow Marco the bridge off, instead of them to come and conquer them. That's what the plan of the North, before British advised them to stand. Along 1968, when they discovered that they want to hold the power fine, fine, family against Biafra, they plot to overthrow Gowan and declare it Islamic war, jihad war, totally. British advised them, if you do this one, you have to lose the war again. That you should stay camp and win the war under political war. This is why in that 1968 or so, uh, Wilson Herod, the then Prime Minister of Britain, there was uh, uproar in Britain as a whole and in Christian food that why should Britain be sp sponsoring war against Christians? That the war is against Christians. Britain came out, British government, Queen and uh, Wilson Herod said that the war is not religious war, it's not traditional war or uh, 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 tribal war, but it's a political war. Look at it, the one is a Christian. This man is a Christian. All, and if you come that time, all of them that are commanding military, commanders in battlefield, all of them are Christians. He said, look at them. This man, this man, he never mentioned they are Christians. Even the West, the Eurobas that join hand persecuting their friends, are they not Christians? Is Abulo not a Christian? Is Abulo not a Jeremiah? They convince them that it's a political, not a tribal or religious war. Then the same Britain went to Arab world, Muslim Arab world. Go tell them that the war is between Christians and Muslims. They should not allow Christians to win Muslim in Nigeria. If they allow Christians to win Muslim in Nigeria, that's the end of Islam in Africa. That's why both Egypt, all of them, Syria, Lebanon, all of them, Saudi Arabia, Give money. All of them join hand. All the whole alpha jet. All the whole alpha jet operated in Nigeria was Egyptian pilots. Abdullah uh, Abdul Nassan, 
the then Egyptian head of state or leader give Nigeria five war jets and give them pilots to operate it. The host of they went and buy the host of it, you know, they joined them. So at the end of it, go and declare no veto, no vanquish. And that Islamistic agenda continue on the ground until 1973, when Al-Haji, Lukman, Lukman, Riman, the then Minister of Petroleum, lead Nigerian contingents to Britain with the OIC. OIC, that is Organization of is Petroleum Exporting Countries. Okay. Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries. You understand? Alaji went there and they signed documents secretly that Nigeria is part of Islamic organization, Islamic countries. And when they come, British Queen Organization of Islamic countries, countries or Islamic nations, but uh, uh, OIC, Organization of Islamic countries, but we have OPEC, Organization of Oil Exporting Countries. But first of all, go one entered OPEC. Nigeria shall don't enter OPEC because if you watch OPEC, OPEC is only Islamic nation made up of, of OPEC. Even up to now, apart from Nigeria now. Then the go one entered OPEC. They say no, it's, it's not a, a, a religious something, it's an oil producing nation. Go one entered OPEC. Before Alaji Lukman Riman, the Minister of Petroleum lead them to go and enter OIC. Secretly in Britain. British government were about it. They signed everything and sealed it. It was France Medium House leaked the whole secret to Nigeria. That time government was, was still in power. Then they, that time was the when the, you, you, you have a uh, little Christian, Christian that are truth. In that time, Christians are little truth to that time. They rise up and stand on their feet say it cannot happen. That Nigeria is a secular nation. Whosoever wants to enter OIC should enter on his own personally, not in the name of Nigerian nation. Before the Northern uh, 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 elites came and said, no, it's not only for the nation. It's for only for Islamic uh, people, not for the nation. All of them. They start arguing. Finally, that thing came to to rest, to be sleeping, not that it was aborted, it came to sleeping. Then, until the Obasanjo regime, look at it from 1973, until the Obasanjo the regime, then uh, Yerima, the then Safara governor, established Sharia. In the, you know, in, a, in, a, in Safara state, there were jubilation, there were this thing. Obasanjo was there, and they called himself a Christian. He did not say, why should you have two laws in Nigeria? Now, and if you come before the independent, Sharia have been serving in North as their traditional uh, summer, uh, customary law, only on Islams, only on Muslims, not on both Christians. And if you come to East, we have our, our customary law, which is law of the people, not secular law. West has their customary law. This is why you have customary courts in every part of Nigeria. But now, they are trying to make Islam to be national law, which means your own customary law will operate under Islamic customary law. Every customary law now in Nigeria will operate under Islamic customary law. This is where, where the, the most agenda is going. Now look at it. Obasanjo did not stop it. Obasanjo allowed that Sharia to be held in Zamfara. Now, and in Zamfara, they did not make it, make it to be a customary law. Because customary law have been existing under Sharia for Muslims. Now, they make the uh, 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 Yerima, I mean Shetima, make it to be to, re, to, re, to replace a uh, uh, secular law in Zafara. They allow it to uphold. 
Now we can see most of the top politicians in the north are saying we need Sharia law. We can, uh, we, we need to Islamatize Nigeria. We need to do this. We need to do that. And the southern Christians in the house, in the government, need to bet Christians in the house, in the government. We are folding their hand, watching because of what they are eating. Holding their hand, watching. This agenda is going. Not the agenda we go, you will be safe. Now, if we finally establish it, whether you like it or not, they will convert you to Islam by sword or by peace, whether you like it or not. Two ways. Now, this uh, Islamization agenda has been sustained now, of course, to be played out by the House of Representatives uh, members from the North. Just as the argument was overheated, uh, of course, uh, at the plenary of the National uh, House of Representatives. And uh, do you think that we see the light of the day? We can see the light of the day. And what is the implication of such? I'm telling you that this Sharia they want to pass now in national law will be see the light of the day. Now, as it is suspended now, let me tell you what will, what will be going on now. I am not there, but this is what I, I am thinking. This is what I'm suspecting. They will take money now, lobby the whole Christian rep uh, rep representative in that, that house of rep. They will take money to now to lobby them, buy all of them. When they come out in the next sitting, they may not challenge, they may not say anything. They may sit down like this, as if say, as if they are sleeping. Then the law will pass. You hear? Iki, Iki, who say, yeah, who say, yeah for the uh, 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 Sharia law to be, they will be like this, as if they are sleeping. Then only the North that are forwarding the Sharia issue will raise up their hand and they will count. Who said no? Who said nay to, to the law of Sharia not to be? If you see them, Southern Christians or Christians in the house, they do like this. They will say, ah, nobody, that uh, majority have carried the vote. Then you are EP. Iki, Iki, they pass it. I'm telling you, it will be. Now, you can see that Mazin Namdekano has been justified. Who said, of course, uh, who projected the Islamization of Nigeria a uh, long ago, about 2013 or so. That, that is part of the thing that keeps Namdekano there. Because the House of Flani have been crying that Namdekano have opened the eyes of other nationality in Nigeria, indigenous nationalities in Nigeria. He will pay for it. That's the part of the price that Namdekalo is paying. And if you watch, look at it. Tulumbu, Muslim. Shetima. Uh, um, Shetima, Muslim. Uh, House of Representative uh, uh, Speaker, Muslim. It's only Akpabio that is rubber stamp, that is a Christian in that area. Look at all the old apparatus, all high keepers are Muslims, whether from the west or from the north. You can see it. So whether you like it or not, now the only thing depends now on individual to stand on their feet, to stand on their feet, to defend their own feet with their own blood, unless you want to become converted to Islam. The individual Christians, look at look at big big pastors in Nigeria. They cannot speak out. Kumuyi, Pen Nigeria, Pen Nigeria have left Nigeria now to London and live in there. All of them, you understand? All the whole men of God. You see them moving with a escort, government escort. You're a man of God moving with government escort. Are you a politician? All of them have been bad over. The so-called pastors, the so-called bishops, reverends have been bought over. What they after is congregation, large congregation. That if you come in, in congregation of 500 people, congregation of 5,000 people, congregation of 70,000 people in that congregation, if trumpet sound, how many people will make heaven? Materialism are what they're after. Materialism have taken over the church. If, if, if in olden days, when a man of God came to speak out in the Bible and give the king's warning, they obey, but not now. Nigerian pastors have been corrupt. They, will, they are the one praying for corrupt politicians to be in power. 